Hello everyone, I'm Colin Connett. Today I'm making an experimental box with an interlocking lid, but it also has a little bit different top on it. Uh, and I'll show you the process of how I did that and the special jig that I made that I used to make this box, so stick around. So there's the box, the finished box, and this is, as I said, an experimental box. I wanted to make an interlocking lid box in a little bit different way, and I also used the same process to make the rounded corners, and I'll show you how we did that. But first of all, I want to show you the jig that I used to make this with. There's the jig that I built for this build, and you can see that it's made out of clear plexiglass. Now you could do a lot of things with this. You could turn this into a mortising jig. You could turn it into a circle jig. What I'm using it for in this build is a stabilization, and I'm going to do a video on this in the next week or two, and I'll show you how you make and how you can center all of this stuff onto your existing router. So you can watch for that in the next couple of weeks or so. So here's the box that I'm going to be working with. Let me show you the details of how it's made. That it just uses a rabbit joint and that of course goes all the way through and you can see the edge of the plywood all the way along here. Now here's the kind of top that we would typically put on that. So I'm working with Baltic birch plywood here as you can see and typically what we would do on a top like this is we'd get a big piece of Baltic birch you know, something big like this, and we would wrap it around so it would fit perfectly in the corner. Of course, it would cover the whole top. Um, but, you know, now we've got really thick top and bottom, and you end up with something that's really thick and heavy. So what I want to do is I want to make a much thinner top, and in this case, I'm actually going to be using some of this door skin plywood material and just make a very thin top so it makes the box that much lighter and I'll put the door skin on the top and on the bottom and we'll make a rabbit all the way around there and glue that on there. That's the point of that. Now the other thing that I want to do is to make a interlocking lid. We can cut the top off on the table saw so the top of the lid will have this the bottom of the box will have this. Now I'm going to be using one of my full-size routers for this job and I've made an adapter plate on the bottom. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. I, but I, before we get to that, I know a lot of you are going to be saying, why don't you just use a trim router? Well, there's two reasons that I don't want to use a trim router. First of all, most trim routers will not take a rabbiting bit and there's a really good reason for that and that is that a trim router is exactly what it says it's for trimming and it wants to use a small router this is a very small router if we start putting great big bits in these what's going to happen is we're going to burn the motor out because we're going to overwork the motor in these little guys uh, and they're just not designed for doing bigger jobs so that's why I'm going to a bigger size so I've gone ahead and made a nice wide plate for my router and the reason for that is whenever you have a small plate like this it's so easy to move it around and not get a good cut and you're going to see when I move this over there why it's so important to have this. So that's what that router looks like on the box and you can see how nice and stable it is and that's going to allow me to make a nice rabbit all the way around. It's not going to tip or move and that's because I have a nice wide base. Okay, I've set everything up now, plugged the router in and I'm all ready to make that cut. This uh, particular piece of plywood that I'm working with, I'm finding it quite chippy, but uh, usually it's not like that. So now the next thing I need to do is to be able to put this, um, put this top in there. And basically all I need to do is measure end to end and side to side. But then I also need to make these rounds. See how it's round in here? So you can see that round in there. So what I'm going to do for the rounds, I'm going to find 
so, a lid or something that's going to fit just perfectly in there and then I can use that to make my rounds on the plywood. But the first thing I need to do is to cut this to size so I'll go ahead and do that. So usually I first thing I do is go to my plumbing box and sure enough one of the first things I found was that look at that it's just a perfect circle so I just did a quick test of it and I just used my sander and just sanded the corner of that and you can see that that's a nice tight fit in there there we go perfect okay I'm going to take a moment and glue that in. Then I'll do the same on the other side of the box because we haven't done anything with that yet. So we'll do the same thing down here uh, and then we'll be able to work on the lid. Well, there's the box and the top and the bottom are all nicely glued on there. And I like the weight of it. It's got good weight, but it's not super heavy uh, with this th really thick top and bottom on it. The next thing I need to do now is take it over to the table saw and cut the lid off so that I can cut the rabbits on the top and the bottom. Now the next thing, this needs to go in the back in the vise and I need to cut off on this side, I need to cut off the front part of the rabbit and on the inside, or on the top rather, I need to cut off the top. So that'll be that inside there. So. Okay, you can see the rabbit there, um, but this really thin veneer on this plywood, you can see how it, um, it's just so thin on this one side here, it just tore out like crazy um, all the way along. But anyway, it's an experiment, so we'll carry on and we'll do the top now and see if we can get a match. The other thing that I'm doing, because of the height of this, I don't want this part right here, this sort of edge part, to crash on the other part and form a gap in there. So what I want to do, I'm going to make this one slightly deeper, just a tiny bit deeper, so that those two parts won't crash together anywhere. Okay, there's the little box, and, and guess what? It doesn't fit. It should fit, but it doesn't fit, and here's why. On the inside, you can see how there's a curve in there. Let's highlight that a bit there. See how that's curved in there? But on the outside, it's not, and that's where the curve would be on the inside. See how I've marked that? Now, I, got a, I have a couple of things I could do. I could use this and just sand this square part off in here, or I could take the lid and use a chisel and just sort of carve that out. And I'm just going to take a little bit of time and just use a chisel and just take those, that out. That won't take long to do. Okay, you can see where I've carved. I actually used a utility knife, was as easy as anything. Um, but what I discovered when I was digging this out, uh, it's very soft. The cores are very soft inside, and it reminded me that this is not Baltic birch. This is some other brand that I purchased, um, and it's it just doesn't have the same quality as Baltic birch, which is why it's doing this blowing out all over the place. But uh, anyway, let's see if we can. Oh, that was easy. 
perfect okay now that's exactly what I was looking for I wanted to have a lid that we could put on after the fact that would have the lip in there uh, and that works perfectly and the reason it works is because this plywood most plywoods are slightly undersized this is half inch but it's a little bit undersized and because of that we can use a half inch setting and it gives us just enough room that we can put a lid on like that so that's excellent well, that concludes my video for today, and of course that concludes the box for today as well. Uh, but I'm really happy the way this turned out. Uh, really nice interlocking lid. Uh, it's got the special top on it, and now I know that I can do the same thing with natural wood. Uh, I just need to plane the right sizes, and, and I'll be able to do that. So I'm looking forward to doing that in the future. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.